The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Are you a songwriter? Are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Soronto. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And I welcome you back to The Songwriter Show. I'm your host, Sorantos, a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words are very important to me, and that's why I'm so thrilled to host this show every Tuesday night. I strongly believe that every song is a story. The Songwriter Show is broadcast live on number one ranked W4CY radio and has listeners in all 206 countries in the world and every state in the United States. The station is licensed with ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, Sound Exchange, and has partnerships throughout the music industry, including iHeartRadio and exposure to over 3 million listeners. Tonight's first guest is Gary Burke. Gary hails from Western Pennsylvania. His musical journey began at the age of nine while riding along with his dad to their family camp. There was a song on the radio, some old time country tune that touched Gary in a way that would change his life forever. His biggest influences are Alabama, Jason Aldean, Luke Bryan, and he fronts a three-piece band of outlaws performing events across the region. Welcome to the show, Gary. How are you doing tonight? Hey, doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, my my friend. Um, You have a very uh, interesting story, and I can't wait to hear your new single Friday night uh, in a little bit. But um, tell me a little bit about when you were inspired at the age of nine. What was that like? You know, we were on our way to, like you said, to our family camp, and I was in the truck with my dad, and there was a CD playing, and uh, it was actually a, a CD by Billy Gilman from when he was young, and uh, I started singing along to it. I sounded a lot like him at that time, and we did some work in that song. Um, we actually we started to redo that song, and it kind of went stagnant for a minute. Um, we met with uh, some members of the band Alabama and great guys we pretty much got to hang out with them they got to tell us about their stories and you know they were young similar similar situations to all them guys where they were young when they got started and you know i came home and from there i went to i picked up a guitar um about two years later and i started playing and singing together and just learning everything i could um listening to songs over and over again and uh, it just it led me to where I am today. Wow. Um, it, was your family musical at all? Um, actually, no. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, my mom is. Yeah, I mean, my mom is, but uh, my dad, not so much. Um, and there was always music playing in the house. You know, there was, we were always, always doing something um, with music, so. Sure. That, that sounds very familiar to my story, too, yeah. Uh, nobody musical uh, in my family, but always radio was always on a tracks. I mean, there was always something playing. So tell us, uh, tell the audience a little bit about your creative process. Do you start with music? Do you start with lyrics, melody? How do you, how do you uh, birth a song? Honestly, whenever I'm, whenever I do write my own material, I work on the, I come up with the guitar part first. I'll be sitting down and I'll start playing something and it just, it, I'll, I'll come up with something good and then I'll start putting words to it. Um, my song Friday night was actually wrote by a, a group of awesome songwriters, uh, Dave Tuff and Dean Barton. Um, they wrote that one. And, you know, I had uh, most of the songs I have out on the radio for, you know, publication and stuff like that is, has been wrote by, uh, a, a, just a different group of songwriters. Um, it's not that I can't write my own material. I just, it, it kind of fell into place where I had songwriters available to me. So, Hey Gary, you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Sorry about that. I, I, uh, I think my, uh, connection wigged out for a second. 
Um, <laughs> no problem at all. So, yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I think, you know, in this industry, my God, on hit songs nowadays, eight, ten people are collaborating. And whether one person uh, does one part or the other or tweaks it, I, I think um, that's part of the industry nowadays. So what is your favorite part? If you could list like a favorite part um, in your songwriting process or your collaborations, what would it be? Oh, boy. Now, honestly, I don't have like a, a single favorite part. The whole process is fun. Um, you know, getting that completed product is probably the best part of it because all your hard work is done at that point. Sure. And do you um, do you have a process for how you figure out what song's going to make it, uh, you know, Friday night? Uh, do you have people you you run it by? Do you have band members? Like, how do you figure out if the song's good enough to be sit the public? Um, like I said, that one, you know, the songwriters, I, I, I came across the song, and I listened to it a few times. And actually, at first, I was like, ah, I don't think this is my style. And then I revisited it, like, a week and a half later, and it just caught my attention that time different. And I was like, man, I hope nobody has cut this yet. i, I got to get this on my album. Um and lo and behold, thankfully, nobody had, had cut it yet, and I still had option on it. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, it, it was more or less just a personal choice. Um, some of my songs, you know, I run them past my family, and I'll be like, hey, what do you think of this one? But for the most part, it's uh, it's been just a, a personal decision, so to say. Okay. Um, how do you get people to take you seriously as a musician? Honestly, that's been a tough part of this. Um just starting out in the industry, you know, it, it wasn't easy. Um, it, it, it was tough to get, you know, radio stations to be receptive of a new artist, it, it, you know, it was, it, especially an independent artist. It was, it, it was rough. And then I hooked up with MTS records and MTS management group. And they really helped take me to that next level where I was able to get in with a ton of radio stations and I was able to get on the air and start playing my music and start sharing it and getting on different playlists and things like that. So it definitely became easier once I kind of, I got with MTS and that gave me that boost that I needed. So, And for um, obviously a lot of the indie musicians listening or people wondering, um, most indie musicians don't have a budget. Is that something that is affordable? Is that something that is a four-digit, five-digit expense? Can you give us a little feedback on that? It, honestly, it just depends. Um, it, a lot of management groups will work with whatever budget that you have. Um, you know, obviously, if you have a bigger budget, you'll get your things to more places. Um, I, don't, I, I don't even want to say it like that. But, you know, obviously, if you have a little bit more to invest in yourself, then you'll be able to get where you want to be sure okay um when you look at touring have you done any touring yet yeah i actually just got home from uh, a really big tour um this past weekend i got home um i was in phillipsburg opening up for uh some mem- phillipsburg pennsylvania opening up for some members of leonard skinner and 38 special and then i left from okay. there and i went to memphis tennessee and I did a TV show in Memphis. I did a TV appearance there. I left Memphis and I went to Nashville. I played a couple shows in Nashville. And from Nashville, I went to St. Louis, Missouri. And I did a uh, in-person radio interview there. And then I went from St. Louis to Kansas City, Missouri. And I did a another TV show there. Um, you know, just did an interview and played some music on the show. And now I'm back home. <laughs> Wonderful. And how do you um, how do you figure out where to tour, who's legit, who's not legit? Is that something the management group helps you with? Or that seems to be one of the yeah. toughest things is to figure out this, you know, pay to play, which obviously most people say don't ever do. But how do you how do you figure out what's legitimate, what's not, what's worth you traveling somewhere to do an in person radio interview or a TV show or play live somewhere? Um, yeah, I mean the management group definitely helps with that. Um, they're able to kind of fish through the the uh, the smoke, I should say. So they make sure that we don't end up anywhere that we shouldn't be. Sure. And uh, one of the fans has a question for you. These places you lived or toured, uh, it sounds like you've toured in these places, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I've toured in all these places. Yeah. And do you live, where do you live currently? 
Um, just north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, we have another fan question from Bryce here. Do you get paid to travel? Um, it's all included in the uh, in the kind of the uh, show costs and things like that. So when I play a show somewhere that obviously is a paying show, um, I do have to incorporate that cost into the travel time and the the band and things like that. So sure, okay. Um, how do you, when you look at um, scams in the industry, what is the biggest scam you've fallen for? Because I like to kind of ask every guest that to try to protect each other. Um, something you want to warn us about, something that you fell for that you think we should know about? Um, when I first kind of got into this, I had some record labels get in touch with me that were what seemed to be big. Um, they were not. They were very small labels that were asking me for astronomical amounts of money. Thankfully, I didn't fall into that trap because I do have a ton of friends in the industry that I was able to talk to before um, going that route. Um, a, a true record label doesn't ask for for payment up front before they'll represent you. Um, yeah. That's kind of... Are you talking about a label or a manager? A label. A like label is a, asking you for money up front. That's yeah. That that definitely sounds like yeah. a red alarm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I mean, you know, they promised me the world, and I was like, ah, this doesn't sound right to me. And uh, lo and behold, it it kind of worked out because I didn't end up going with them. Um, and I I caught onto it a little bit sooner than I think they expected me to, which was which was great. Yeah. For me. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I've. You know, I thought I've heard of every scam, but I've never heard of a record label trying to get you to pay them. That's, you know, that's just, I, what are you going to do? I had I had more than one, actually. <laughs> I had quite a few reach out to me and say, hey, give us 10 grand. We'll make you famous. Wow. Um, when you look at uh, the last month of your life, what's the funniest thing that's happened to you? The funniest? Yeah. Um, I was playing a show in not too far from my hometown here, and uh, I was kind of being silly jumping around on the stage. And prior to the show, there was a set of steps down the side of the stage. And prior to the show, my drummer says to me, Gary, watch those steps. I don't want you to fall down them. And I jokingly was like, oh, I won't fall down them. I'm good. I see them. <laughs> you know, it'll be you that falls down them. Well, lo and behold, I was jumping around the stage, and I ran down the stage to kind of just, I ran into the crowd for a second. On my way back up, I actually tripped up the stairs. <laughs> um, I fell in the middle of a lead. I was playing because uh, I'm the lead guitarist. And uh, I fell down and continued to play the lead. And I got up, obviously, after, after I was done. But, uh, yeah, that's probably the funniest thing in the last month that happened. Hey, you're dedicated, man. Not even, you know, falling up or down can uh, affect your guitar work. Uh, tell tell uh, tell us a little bit about what you were like in high school. Um, for some of my high school career, um, I was homeschooled, and I traveled and did this music thing a little bit, uh, and that started when I was sixteen. But prior to that, I mean, I was kind of a quiet guy, um, and everybody knew that I liked music, and everybody, you know, I was in the chorus and the band and anything musical that I could be in. Um, and that's just kind of how everybody knew me. Yeah. Um, is there anything that has surprised you about the music business that, uh, you had no idea? How many great musicians there are out there? And there is a ton of great musicians and great talent in this world that I just, I didn't know was out there until I started really getting heavily into this. Yeah, amen. That's uh, that's very true. There are a lot of talented people, and I don't have any secret sauce or to tell people what you know what will get you to the top, other than uh, keep going. I think a lot of perseverance. You know, you hear the expression. I've said it many times. You know, you work your ass off for ten years to become an overnight sensation, and I think it just takes um, a lot of work, a little luck, probably a lot of money, and uh, you just got to keep going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, if, if you were 
guaranteed be to, guaranteed to be successful in anything other than music, what would it be? Huh. Like business wise or anything. Life wise. Could be anything, yeah. If I was guaranteed to be successful in anything, it would be being a spouse and father. A successful one of both. Because I do have kids. Yeah, all right. Is it uh, challenging to juggle that? Being a you know, husband, being a dad? Um, I mean, my fiance is real, real cool about it. She's super supportive. Um, couldn't have asked for anything better in that aspect. Um, my kids think it's super cool. Dad's a rock star. <laughs> so, I mean, they, they think that's neat. Um, it, it is a challenge, though, because, like, this last tour, you know, that was the longest I'd been away from my kids yet. And when I got home, I, I realized that I missed them. But, you know, they understand. Um, they're still pretty young. But, you know, I feel like they do understand that sometimes that. Yeah. How long were you gone for? Um, we were away from them for nine days. On this, wow. on this kind of run. Yeah, that is Which wasn't time. even that long. Which yeah. wasn't even that long. Um, okay. Um, tell us a little bit about your web, you know, website. Where can fans buy your music? Where can they find out about you? Yeah, um, my website is www.garyburkethird, and that's with three eyes, dot com. Um, there's links to buy my music on there. There's uh, links to my Facebook page my Instagram, my Twitter, all that stuff, and all my tour dates. Okay. And tell us a little bit about the song. What was the inspiration behind it? Uh, what do you want the listener to um, notice when they hear the song, or what do you want to take up from it? Honestly, Friday Night is a party song. Um, I hate to call it that, but it is a party song. Um, I grew up back in the woods, you know, where on a Friday night, what everybody was doing was hanging out in the field, you know, having a few beers and jumping around, being a goofball around the campfire. And, uh, yeah, this song, if anybody out there is listening that lived in the woods or lived in the country and not in the big city, I mean, even big city people can probably relate to it because they've all left the city and gone to one of these parties. But, uh, that's just what it's all about and pretty much anybody could relate to that okay and uh last question before we listen to your song is there a specific accomplishment that you're proud of that you think all the listeners should know about um yeah i reached uh 50,000 streams on friday night uh within the second week of it airing that's awesome. Congrats. That's this song, correct? Yes. So 50,000 streams total or 50,000 in one, one night? It was 50,000 in two weeks. So by the time two weeks rolled around, it was 50,000 streams. Yeah, that's wonderful. From, from release. That's wonderful. And is that, uh, um, is that with no marketing efforts or with marketing efforts, just your fan base? That was just fan base. Um, you know, obviously, MTS released it under their label, and uh, you know they kind of took the reins on it. Yeah, but, uh, that's that's great, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, it took off like a rocket. So yeah, that's great because just from the kind of guy you are and knowing a little bit about MTS, it's legitimate. You know, I mean, there's a bunch of people buying fake streams and fake everything, so that's uh, that's very impressive. So. All right, Gary, it was wonderful having you on the show, and now we're going to listen to your song Friday night. All right, well, hey, thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Have a great night. Kick it in. Jenny had the whiskey last, Dylan's out there smoking grass. Sheila's got the Jaeger, she's sipping it slow. Field is full of pickup trucks, Jim and Jesse just pulled up. Give them boys a Dixie cup, it's time to roll. Robbie's starting fights, he's only five feet tall. Everybody loves him, he brings the alcohol. Do 
chairs out by the fire. Sheila's finally passing out. What the hell are you laughing about? Seeing all us rednecks having some fun. Billy Skinny dipping all he's wearing is his hat. The funny thing about it, there's no water where we're at. Welcome this week's special guest. So I want to introduce our second guest, Sean Knowles. Sean, since he was 14, the only thing he wanted to do on this planet was make music. Um, Sean has another wonderful story. And at one point, he was poisoned by fear and doubt, but he found no other purpose. And he really just uh, focused on any pain in his life. And now he's sharing it with us in his journey with music. Welcome to the show, Sean. How are you doing tonight? Sean, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you at age 14, how you got started on this road? Yeah, it actually is um, listening to the Red Hot Chili Peppers album, the uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic album. Um, I listened to it for like two weeks straight when I was on vacation. And uh, ever since then, I kind of just knew that that's what I wanted to do, was make music. Okay. And what, uh, do you have an instrument of choice, or uh, what's, your, what's your talent there? Well, my first, uh, my first spot in my band in high school was just uh, writing is, is what I do, really. I write lyrics, and, uh, and I sing. So I'm a singer-songwriter. As far as the instruments go, um, I haven't uh, mastered any instrument, but I can play all of them. So I kind of play everything and nothing. Um, it's not really an artist in, in a true form where I kind of just make it work. I bring it together. Um, I learned how to play the drums pretty pretty easily in my first band. But as of now, what I do is uh, most of my stuff is uh, written through um, you know, starting melodies on uh, an acoustic guitar. Just grabbing arrangements of notes and um, often, you know, transferring those into a MIDI with a keyboard in the studio. So uh, I make up a lot of different solos and loops and arrangements through just feeling where, where I want to go with the next note. Yeah. And do you have anyone help you mix it, uh, master it at the end, or do you just do everything yourself? Uh, no, yeah, I'm actually working with a guy who is just a Logic Pro guy, and uh, he really knows what he's doing. Yeah, he, uh, speaking that we're on, uh, speaking with Skype, he does Skype lessons all over the world um, for people with Logic Pro. So he's pretty good at what he does. Um, he gives me the freedom too to kind of work it piece by piece. As far as some studios I reached out to at the beginning, we're wanting uh, you know to commit to like ten hour days, eight hour days, something like that. Uh, I don't have a band, you know, this is all just my vision that I'm creating on my own. So I kind of have to do it a piece at a time. Um, so that's what he was able to do. And we kind of just meet for four hours here, meet for four hours there. And then when a song's uh, compositionally ready, then he just gets to the mastering and kind of cleans it up and, and puts a little polish on it. Okay. And do you do all the all your own singing in your songs? Or do you hire yeah, yeah. singers? No, no, it's just all me. You know, I just kind of uh, create everything. When I do need chords, guitar chords played, I'll have him play. He's uh, he's an electric guitar player in, in his own band. Uh, and then I have a friend who produ- provides me with some 
Century Salad Riffs, uh, Acoustic Riffs. Actually, the song that we're going to hear here, he, uh, he provided the music for this one as well. Okay. Now, do you have, uh, if you could be in a room with any musician, dead or alive, who would you pick? Uh, Jim Morrison. Okay. Why? I just think he had an amazing, amazing perspective on how precious life is and, and how quickly it can and will end. And uh, I think he had a, a, a great ability to just be free on stage, free with his art um, and capt- captivate audiences. Yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about, uh, do you do any touring? I don't, you know, um, I'm really kind of, uh, at the stage, still at the stage that I've been in for the past few years where I'm just creating, I'm just completely focused on making as much great music and, uh, and as much great art as I possibly can. Um, I don't really know what to do next. Um, as far as getting a band together and getting a live set. So th- that's kind of where, I, where I'm still at right now. Okay. Just just creating in the studio, uh, you know, making videos, producing videos, and producing songs. And how do you decide what song is going to make the cut? Um, well, I've, so far I've released one uh, formal album and then one single. And on the album, that actually was a tough one because I have so many finished songs that I had to pick the best ones. And on this album, I just really just chose what are the best songs to really tell my story you know, it's a, it was a very personal story on this first album, so I wanted to um, to keep it, you know, personal throughout each song. Sure. What uh, What was your first job? My first job? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I think washing dishes when I was, like, 13. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of your story, man. That's There's nothing wrong with that. I've done that, too. My, 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 uh, I guess friend. so. Yeah, yeah, I was in a party center. <laughs> <laughs> what uh any hidden talents or surprising hobbies do you want to confess to live on the air here um just the one that we're talking about <laughs> okay all right um if you could uh, if you could tell us about a time when things didn't go the way you wanted um how did you know tell us about something like that and how you reacted to it well i mean as far as Digging out an actual circumstance or instance, you know, I would probably really revert to to really what, what my main uh, the, the story of, of this music is that we're talking about. And it's just like my life at one point wasn't going the direction I wanted it to go. You know, um, like I said, I knew I wanted to make music from a very young age. But uh, I kind of ignored that year for a long time and just went along with a prescribed life. I started building a career in finance and banking in the corporate world. And as I became more successful, I became less happy just, you know, with my day to day life and living. So it was really important for me to, to get that awareness and recognition of the yearn in my heart, you know, and, and this creativity that I had stirring up, I couldn't ignore that anymore. So, um, I had, to, uh, you know, my life was going, not going the way that I wanted it to go. And I had to be uh, brave enough to, to make that choice to completely change the direction of it and, and make things the way that I wanted as hard as people can think sometimes it as it is to, to make the changes they need to make, to make their life how they want it. It's possible. You know, Uh, all we have to do is just take action, be patient and and let things work out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Do you have a hidden superpower? (laughs) I don't think so. Not that you know of yet, right? Yeah. Uh, what was the last gift someone gave you? Um, a letter. Very, very nice letter. Okay, was that a fan or a personal note, or what was that? Uh, it was just uh, pretty much a love letter for my wife. Ah, okay. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a really great gift. It was just a it was for my birthday. It was just. Pretty much uh, four pages just telling me all the reasons she loved me. That's awesome. That, the that best sounds... gift of them all, right? Yeah, that sounds like a song waiting to happen there. It's written. I just yeah. haven't produced it yet. All right. Uh, do you consider yourself more of a gatherer or hunter? 
Um, I, yeah, I don't know neither. I'd say, man. Okay. Um, what uh, what area are you at geographically in the U.S.? I'm in, I'm right in downtown Chicago right now. Oh, okay. on Michigan. On Michigan Avenue. Well, it's a nice night, so hopefully you're uh, enjoying the view out there. It's beautiful. Uh, What's the best pizza you've had in Chicago? Uh, I'd say um, there's a spot in uh, at, um, River Plaza. It's it's in the uh, the lobby of it. it's called Bongiorno's. It's really 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 great. Okay, all right. Um, so I'm going to ask you this question. It's going to probably annoy some of your fans, but if you could get rid of one state in the U.S., which state would it be and why? Oh. Uh, um, <laughs> these questions I guess I would have to say I would get rid of Texas just because they want to get rid of they want to uh, separate from us anyway <laughs> <laughs> alright that's a good enough reason um, you talked a little bit about your previous job what's the craziest thing a boss ever asked you to do oh sh- that, you I, could, I, that you could admit to I, I mean, I can't. I don't even know how to answer that question. I I can't even think of anything. Sorry, uh, that's all right. How about uh, any good movies you've seen lately? Oh yeah, Spider Man: Far From Home. It was yeah, awesome. I saw it too. That was pretty good. Yeah. What was your favorite Definitely. part? Um, I like the part when uh, when he was in the uh, got he got caught with his pants down, literally. <laughs> yeah that was, that was kind of funny yeah that's what i love about marvel they always inject some uh, humor and some down-to-earth kind of stuff in their movies yes yeah. totally um when do you think you're going to release new music after the stuff you just released now are you planning to do it annually every three um, years do you have any idea oh no my gosh i have too so much content uh, i have from the list of songs that i already have completed i plan on doing a, a couple more five song EPs just within the next year. Um, it's just a matter of picking the right songs, getting uh, the right focus to polish them up and, and release them. Okay. You know, and I don't I, yeah, I, I'm kind of at a, a point too, where it really, for, for me, you know, everyone's at a different stage with where they're at in making music, whether it's just a desire to start doing it, whether they've started doing it, whether they've got, um, small labels, large labels, an agent, some kind of tour, you know, and I'm at that, I'm at the point where I'm at a crossroads, you know, like, like I said, all I know is I want to keep making music and I'm really just doing the best I can do to make the best art I can make. I don't know really what to do next. I've been scrutinizing thoroughly, like what paths should I take to market myself? How can I start building my following a little bigger? And, um, I've, I've been very reluctant to move forward. You know, it's like, um, I want to remove all this, all the, any and all doubt before I move forward with it. So I want to uh, make sure that I'm making the right moves. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. And, and I have been in this, I've been doing this six years officially and I don't have an answer, man. Every time I think I have an answer, it's just, there's so much, uh, minutia out there and you, you know, marketing people that, um, you can't tell who's legit. You can't tell who's real. Mm -hmm. Um, It's tough, man. That's the toughest part about this is if you have a hundred dollars, I couldn't even tell you six years into it where to go put that hundred dollars because, um, again, I've, I've invested in services I thought were legit, even on Facebook. And then ended Mm -hmm. up getting a bunch of fake followers on Facebook advertising on Facebook. So it's just, it's, it's a difficult, uh, it's a difficult thing when you don't have a big, label that can you know track everything and figure out um so i don't have an answer for you i wish i did yeah no yeah i know and it's just kind of like you gotta i just gotta you know keep keep my faith and know that uh the right doors will open when they're supposed to but again it's like you said it's like short you there oh i think we lost sean there for a second um, I was just going to ask him about his website. Hopefully he comes back to us. Sean, you there? 
Well, um, we were going to uh, listen to a song here in a couple minutes, but uh, this will give him another few seconds. If he doesn't get back on, we'll uh, hear his song, and then if we uh, are able to reconnect with him, we'll uh, try to have him. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now again. But Okay, sorry about that. Um, that's okay. Tell us a little bit about your contact information. Where can people buy your music? Where can they find out about you? Yeah, if you just go to sake48.com, that's S-A-K-E 48.com. All my buttons are there. So uh, my work's on any platform. I have a YouTube channel. I produce my own videos that I make for my songs and upload them there. And then I do have the one formal album and uh, single that are available to stream or download. Wonderful. Now tell us a little bit about this song and the inspiration behind it and what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, this is actually w- one of the songs that I didn't write for myself, uh, which is funny because the reason I do what I do is because is I write. But this is the one that was uh, – I have a buddy who is a great musician back in Cleveland, and uh, he'll provide me with certain ideas that I'll choose whether or not to move forward with or not. And this was one he provided me with. So the song was really just – it was a great – it was such a refreshing one for me to do because I didn't have to think too hard about the composition – or uh, building it because it was kind of built for me. So I got to just perform it, which was a lot of fun. And um, I really enjoyed it. And it's a great story and it's very catchy. I did get to uh, to dress it up a little bit with a little bit of, of dressing, uh, you know, catchiness to it too. So, uh, but basically it's just, you know, it's, it's angel on the run. It's just about uh, a relationship that's not working and someone's, the girl's ready to go and the guy's watching her go, but it's hurting him. And that's that. Wonderful. What uh, What's your favorite '90s jam? Oh gosh, one jam. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'd have to say. Can I just give you my favorite band from the '90s? <laughs> sure, why not? I mean, yeah. uh, Nirvana. Nirvana, ah, cool yeah. band, cool band, yeah, totally, uh, yeah. Uh, well, we got about a minute left here before we uh, hear your song. Uh, want to tell us anything about uh, the best and the worst advice anyone's ever given you in the music business? Um, well, some of the worst advice I've ever gotten would be to to not listen to your heart and to not uh, move forward with you know what you believe you can do. Um, you, you, we always have to stay true to ourselves, you know. And some yeah. of the best advice that I've gotten is. Uh, just again is to, to believe in your dreams and believe in your your heart and it doesn't matter if you're it really doesn't matter if you're reaching one person 10 people 100 people or a million people you know if you reach one person you're making a difference so uh, what's most important is just to do what makes you happy yeah that's so true um you know everybody fantasizes about millions of people listening to their songs at the same time or playing to eighty thousand people but you're right one person you can make a difference with one person that uh that means something so that's why we do this for sure yeah all right man it's been great cool. having you on the yeah. show we're gonna Thank hear you. your song right now and i wish you nothing but the best all right thanks so much all right no problem sean have a good night all right. see you all right so now we're gonna hear sean's song here we go A thousand balloons escaping her tomb Just like a flower in bloom Raindrops like hand grenades Crashing on wiper blades Fast driving far away As the empty car serenades
With a look in her eye, elating a sigh. Meanwhile, controlling her cry. A wall breaking tidal wave just washed all my peace away. A ship sinking Saturday. Gonna drown in my tears today. That was a very wonderful song. Uh, Sean's got got a wonderful voice there. And uh, I'm not sure, Sean, I think we can still hear your mic there. But uh, okay, yeah, (laughs) Uh, from what I could hear of his song, uh, Sean, uh, very awesome. I like the chorus, like the melodies, like the progressions. And I think it's uh, very cool. Um, so anyway, we're at the conclusion of our show here and I want to thank everyone for tuning in again tonight. Anyone out there who may be an artist and want to be on the songwriter show, please feel free to contact me. I thank you all for listening and I hope your own unique story gets heard all around the world. My name is is Sorantos. Please join me every Tuesday night to hear other amazing artists share their fascinating behind the scenes stories right here on the songwriter show. And I'm going to leave you tonight with uh, one of my songs I released a few years ago called Did You Cheat? You know, cheating is one of the most sensitive topics. Cheaters don't want to talk about it. Cheaties, not sure if that's a real word, they try to bury the painful memories and emotions. There's guilt, there are excuses, rationalizations, justifications. It's not easy and it's not fun for anyone. Is the grass really greener on the other side? Probably not. So I tackled this sensitive subject matter with the song Did You Cheat? It's kind of a hard rock metal vibe, and I thought the instrumentation would capture the powerful anxiety, angst, and anger of these lyrics. So anyway, enjoy Did You Cheat, and I'll see you next Tuesday night on The Songwriter Show. Thank you for listening.
www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists, songwriters, and producers. That's www.songwritershow.com.